Episode 21. We go back to where we began, with the classified Chan Thomas book, The Adam and Eve Story, and the postlude that has finally been revealed beyond the sanitized version the CIA did release. It not only furthers the resolve surrounding a catastrophe cycle on Earth, but it proves that the government hid support for the plasma universe and continued to try to hide it even after their release of the sanitized copy. The catastrophe cycle is a legitimate double conspiracy, both the story of our planet and the direction of modern physics away from reality. But first, we will examine the premise built on the preceding episodes as a foundation, and the foundation is simple. The disaster is coming. There are coincidences you just don't ignore. Like when a story by an Air Force major details a fossil record of magnetic reversal driven mass death events on Earth, with the CIA and Pentagon to which he reported, saying they happened 12,000 years apart. And when an accountant surveys available literature, lining up the numbers in the exact same way, even while having to decode carbon-14 dating changes in the 90s. And when the evidence of magnetic reversals, mass extinctions, and the appearance of new species have a suspiciously similar periodicity with carbon dating error ranges potentially being high due to ice sheet cosmic ray shielding and only half of Earth facing the Sun or galactic center at any given time, taking the brunt of a burst. The patterns described by Robert Felix walk in the footsteps of Cuvier, Hibbins, and Duluth, and they seem to involve cataclysmic shifts of the planet's rotation or tilt, with inundations of the sea, and with the shift of Earth's magnetism. We have, of course, seen the rapid acceleration of Earth's changing magnetism over the last hundred years and are about due for the next cycle event by nearly every approximation available in this realm. We have even seen an outside look at the longer and more cataclysmic million-year cycle from Dr. Raskin that cannot escape the trinity of magnetic reversal, sea level disruption, and mass extinction. With this, we must ask a question which we will seem to answer and then later have to reconsider. Is this a linear process when the galaxy or sun triggers the Earth's disaster, or do the changes at various scale occur in unison and harmony, with linear processes added on top of them? The fact that Earth's magnetic field has already begun its shift, without the great solar flash or impacting galactic superwave, forces one to think that perhaps this is not linear, but that resonant, harmonious, clocked process where the interconnectedness is showing us signs on Earth before the crescendo. We'll fight that magical notion momentarily. Because now we come back to the beginning. The entire reason this collective has now begun to re-examine a catastrophe story after five years' leave. The CIA declassified a highly sanitized, 57-page version of the Adam and Eve story, which most of us had never heard of. We had no idea just how sanitized it was, but we could tell from the structure and foreshadowing that more was missing, and it was all we had. So we began by exploring that most extreme version of the catastrophe in Chapter 1, and by seeing that the foundation of debunking that crustal displacement theory came from a bachelor's degree authored paper from a CIA-controlled department at Columbia University, and from a paper describing a historical pole position record which would debunk the crustal motion, but which had corrections to the article, some of which put the pole positions in history 180 degrees longitude away from their previous guess and nearly that far in latitude. That correction paper was lost in the literature. The debunking paper pressed on. 57 pages of flowery detail describing a disruption to Earth's low-velocity zone plasticity due to an electromagnetic disruption that allows the crust to shift. That was all we had. And then Adrian D'Amico and Gary Long stepped up. They found, hunted down, and received the full Chan Thomas work, and it includes a postlude of incredible bounty, and which might actually explain the reason for its classification and heavy sanitization thereafter. As you might know, Adrian has been my friend for more than 20 years, and he runs a UFO, ET, cultural political threats, and conspiracy channel called Suspect Sky. He and Gary went next level hunting this down and bringing it to you. On SuspectSky.com, you can find a link to a full page-by-page -page turning of the Adam and Eve story and the postlude performed by Gary Long. Highly recommend you check it out. Now here is what I took away from the postlude. It is hard to deny 
that it's all about the big event. The book describes the mammoths in detail and how the mud in which they were encased, not ice, indicated that a tsunami of frigid ice and tundra and soil was thrust upon it. We heard this from Dr. LaViolette not long ago. The strata of Earth, being another evidentiary layer, shows the homogeneity not possible without the catastrophe. There is a fascinating bit about the asteroid belt being a destroyed planet, which favors many of the ancient stories and the resonance model of the solar system. He spoke of various survivors in various regions who did not receive as bad of wind and tsunamis as other areas, and if you think about it, anywhere a petroglyph was carved is a place where they survived, at least initially. And then Gary turned the page again and my heart literally stopped. I almost fell. There it was. That name. It just so happens that Chan Thomas, like the great Anthony Peratt, is a student of Hannes Alfane and the plasma universe. His focus on magnetohydrodynamic power is one of the great mystery solvers in the universe, especially because our planetary low-velocity zone plasticity that is holding the crust in place is a function of it internally, geomagnetically, and it can be disrupted. The next part is critical, because Chan Thomas makes a mistake. His position is that the event is galactic, but not a superwave. The magnetic null zone crossing, called a reversal region of the galaxy, which would cause Earth's low velocity zone to lose its plasticity and for the crust to shift, exactly as we heard in episode one of this series. The magnetic nulls are in fact what we now well understand to be called current sheets, in this case at the galactic level. The trigger we hypothesized in earlier episodes is indeed where the galactic interstellar magnetic fields change direction, and that is exactly what Chan Thomas is talking about. We have recently seen bolstered evidence of this field in all galaxies with the presence of nanodust in the interstellar medium, statically clinging to the electric field double layer like dust on a Swiffer. The national labs and NASA have begun to go plasma universe, and at the galactic scale that means that the galactic nucleus is where a plasma current meets the electric field, which is where the galaxy is found. And if there is one thing we know from the science of magnetohydrodynamics, the stories of the ancients, and the evidence here and on the moon, it is that the sun gets involved as well. Chan Thomas misses this completely. And we revisit the linearity of the event now to challenge the magical interconnectedness that tantalized our imagination minutes ago. The current sheet is likely to be broad, but the reversal of the galactic fields to be predominant and fast in the middle of the sheet. It is magnetically null because one sheet and one hemisphere of fields flows out from the galactic center, and the other sheet and other hemispheric fields come back in, canceling the magnetism right in the middle just like in the heliospheric current sheet in the solar system. So we would expect to enter the double layer and begin the magnetic reversal process long before the field influence switched and the sun began to rock and roll. Furthermore, it is hard to imagine a galactic event triggering the Earth, but not the sun. This could truly be a multiple event catastrophe. So what is the point of all this? Again, that we are survivors, for you and your children's sake. There needs to be a plan just in case, and in lieu of living your life in fear, knowing what to do in those first moments is important. Are you hunkering down? Are you getting out of an urban area? Are you getting supplies ready? Or are you planning on know-how after the event? Enjoy life responsibly. We are here to learn and fail and enjoy and try and love. You may pay for poor decisions in this life or elsewhere. Your awareness may make the difference in what DNA makes it to the next age. The Global Petroglyph Library and Rock at Survival Sites is a great reassurance of our endurance, and we'll need it, because Novus Tempus is coming. Chan Thomas believed the next event was imminent, like many other voices we've heard. But more importantly, his focus on Alphane and Plasma Universe principles is probably the explanation for its classification. Not only is this the doorway to unlimited universal energy, but understanding the planet and the power to control the people's minds about it, not to mention superweapons, anti-gravity, and anything you or the craziest person you can think of can think of. I can think of some reasons to keep it secret, and I can think of some more important things at stake right now, however, like the continuity of our species. 
I cannot implore you enough to go back and watch the 20-odd episodes in this series, linked below. We're not done yet either. Be safe, everyone.